Hey, would you please turn in your Bibles to the Gospel according to John, chapter 20? The Gospel according to John, chapter 20. And as always, um, if you can just give me a couple of minutes after service for just um, two quick announcements. So John chapter 20, as we continue our verse-by-verse, chapter-by-chapter study in the Gospel according to John. And uh, uh, this morning when I read this, I almost fell over backwards in that, man, we're almost done with the book of John, which is like huge. I don't know, but I was like, what? I can't believe this. So what a joy to continue to be steadfast and immovable. Amen? What do we continue to be? Tell me one more time. What do we continue to be? Steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, right? We meet on Wednesdays. We meet on Sundays. We deal with each other on Tuesdays. Um, uh, whatever we're, we're partaking of, we're steadfast, we're immovable, we're always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always digging into His Word, not turning to the left or turning to the right, um, but dead on when it comes to His Word. Amen? And so let me lovingly encourage you and remind you that um, that's the foundation of it all. Jesus Christ and Him crucified, um, but as a spin-off of, of that, if you will, is the totality and sufficiency of His Word so that the man of God, so that the woman of God would be thoroughly equipped, listen, for every good work. That's found in the book of 2 Timothy. Uh, matter of fact, a group of us read it yesterday, last night. So uh, I remind you of that, that it's important for you, if you haven't already, to make sure that that's the foundation of, of your walk. God's Word, that you're in it, that you're reading it. Um, in the midst of everything, that that would be everything around that. Everything around that. Just like you have to have a meal every day, then I mean, you have to get into the Word every day. I mean, it's just as simple as that. There's really no way around it. Um, you can incorporate it into anything and everything. Say amen if you're with me. Uh, last night a group of us got together to watch a fight, um, guess what we did before the fight? Well, no, we ate. No, but before that, we read the Word. <laughs> I'm so glad you're keeping up with us. <laughs> but that's a good thing, though. She said pray. But, that's, but thank you, for sure. <laughs> but we were in the Word, right? We, we, we read, I think it was the book of 2 Timothy. Um, and it just has to be the foundation of everything that we do. For in that... There's the safety that we have, that we're in the Word, because the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy that perilous times will come in the last days, and men will be lovers of themselves, they'll be boasters, they will be haughty, they will deceive and be deceived, they, uh, children will be, um, they'll have sharp teeth against their parents. It was all right there. It's, it's not, a, it's not a, a surprise what we're seeing today and uh, and some will be led astray by fables and stories and um, and may I say even the elect can be led astray so this is why we need to as the elect if even we can be led astray man we need to lock in more than any time before I would presume to I would say to you um, and we just need to make the word just part of our everyday life. That's all there is to it. And, and if you're doing that already, be steadfast, be immovable when it comes to that. If somehow you slacked a little bit with that, then get to it. Get back. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that hard. Pick a book. Just go through it, chapter a day. My family and I, are uh, we're going through the book of Luke. Um, today's the 5th. We're going through the 5th. On the 24th, guess what? We finish. Now that's common knowledge, I'm letting everybody know, amen. Right there? So, um, so that's what we picked. Maybe you want to choose to do that too. Start today with Luke 6. Or what is it today, Luke 6? Really simple. It's not that big of a deal. 
Um, and some chapters in Luke are very long. I know that our attention span is about, you know, that of a gnat these days, if the truth be told, right? Nobody reads anymore. Everything's the quick, quick, quick. Um, so listen, if that's an issue, do this. Read a couple chapters in the morning. Read a couple, I'm sorry, read a couple of verses in the morning. Read a couple of verses in uh, midday for lunch and then finish it off at night. It's really, really not that big of a deal. You know, Luke is long. There are some chapters that are super long. So if that's a challenge for you, then just separate it like that. Again, uh, super simple. If, um, if you're determined, it's very simple. No big deal. And by the way, you've been hearing me say this, I don't know, like since we met. <laughs> and still, one year and not the other for some of us. Let it be known that I told you. Let it be known. That I looked, I'm going to look at the Lord and I said, I told this dodo brain, right? I told him, I told her, Lord, and you have told me. Amen? Amen. So, if that's not you today, 15 Hail Marys and put $500 in the box and you'll be fine. God forbid. That was a joke that kind of like killed the, the very tense mood that I was uh, sensing. Um, but anyway, God loves you. Amen? Period, man. He loves you. Everything that we do from here on in is for our growth and our maturity. Because His love for you doesn't change. Um, he's not going to love you any less today or any more tomorrow. He's got a perfect love for you. Because the only thing that can come out of perfect is perfection. And since perfect is God, nothing that streams from Him can be anything but perfect. Perfect love, perfect peace, perfect uh, righteousness, perfect judgment, perfect justice. Whatever you want to fill in the blank with, it's going to be perfect. Because in fact, perfect is God. Amen? So we're there in John chapter 20. Um, we know what has happened. He's, he's been crucified. He's hung on the cross. Um, you remember Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. They've gone to Pilate and asked for the body um, and taken the body. And in addition to taking the body, I wonder who carried him. Oh, no, we do know who carried him. The other one, and I forget which one was which, uh, carried 100 uh, pounds of spices. You remember? In order to... Huh? Nicodemus. Nicodemus. Thank you. So Joseph, so we presume that Joseph of Arimathea is the one that carried the limp body. Um, you know, the, the, the torn body, the dried, bloody body, back to wherever it was that they were going to embalm him. Amen? Right? And these guys are not professional embalmers, so I suppose they did the best they could. I know for a fact that the Jewish, Jewish tradition is that they, they show the utmost respect for the body, despite the fact that... Um, the, the essence of who that body was, the spirit, amen, right? Because you are a spiritual being having an earthly experience, right? So when you're laying there, it's not really you anymore, amen? It was just, just the earthly uh, corpse, if you will. It's just the earth suit. Nevertheless, the Jews, they take this extreme, extreme, um, they show extreme respect to the body, to the point that they even speak to the body. For example, they will say, Mr. Cohen, let's say, um, we're turning you around now. Mr. Cohen, uh, excuse us. And by the way, they don't look at, they purposely don't look at, you know, the, the let me just say, the private parts. Out of respect. Say amen if you're with me. So I share that with you because that tradition was from, from the beginning. So how must it have looked that day with these two guys dealing with bo this body? Because, you know, they didn't just wrap them up and put them in there, in, the, in that, in that um, cave, if you will. No, they cleaned them up because this is what you did. And again, these guys weren't professional embalmers, but yet they took it upon themselves. How must that have looked? As these two looked at each other, they're like, what are we doing here? But we know we're called to do this. We sense it in our hearts. We're going to do it. What a, what a moment that must have been for these two guys. 
And I often like to read the word like that and I throw myself in there and I pretend mentally that I'm one of these guys. And, uh, and I suggest you do that. Uh, number one, it helps your thinking skills. It really does. Number two, it, it stirs your imagination, which helps you be a better thinker. And this is not a self-help day, by the way. But most importantly, here's A, okay, because the other two were B and C. Here's A. Man, it puts you in the thick of the, um, it puts you in the thick of the, the situation. And in that, you see things that you might not have seen before. Say amen if you're with me. I pray you're getting this. And so, um, how must it have looked for these guys, how they looked at themselves? How did they speak to the body, you know, as they cleaned him up? And by the way, this was a bigger cleanup job than most. Would you agree? I mean, come on, man. Everything was exposed. The organs were exposed, everything. And so how must it have looked like? They did the best they could. They, they, then they, they embalmed them with the spices that they had, 100 pounds worth, and then they, well, wrapped them up to the best of their ability. It's going to be a cool conversation to have with those dudes. But you never thought of speaking to those guys, right? We always speak, can't wait to see David. Can't wait to see Paul, right? But isn't it be kind of cool to speak to those two guys and say, bro, how, did that, how was that, man? Please let me know. And I just can't wait for that conversation. Apparently, I'm the only one, but that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. We all have our little quirks. And, uh, but anyway, and so how must that, that have looked? And so that's over with already. They lay him inside that, um, that grave, if you will, that it was a, what we would call a virgin grave. Nobody had ever been laid there, and um, it was a, a cave that had been carved out, and, and we believe that it, it belonged to Joseph of Arimathea, which we know was an extremely wealthy man. Uh, we know because of the writings of Josephus, and we know because that particular sepulcher, if you will, that particular um, grave, not, the one on, not on the floor, but inside a rock, it, you, didn't, you didn't own something like that unless you were extremely wealthy, because it took a lot of money to carve that out. Say amen if you're with me. And the normal working middle class man, if you will, of modern day vernacular, would not be able to own something like that. Would not be able to pay the labor to have that uh, hewn out, that, that rock hewn out, that, that, that earth hewn out of that cave and make a big hole. You couldn't do that. Say amen if you're with me. And so... God had this planned forever. And so they go and they lay the body down. And, well, life continued at that point. Sadness, confusion, um, stress, anxiety, all these what we call emotions just all gathered together and each one of them individually experiencing it and then each one corporately experiencing it. And so I submit to you that that was a very somber night for these individuals. For their hope, or hopes, if you will, and hope, singular and plural, had been completely dashed. For you see, this is who they were looking to and for. Of course, because of the lack of the Spirit residing in them, they couldn't fully understand the whole gamut, if you will, the whole story. They had been told, you know, but they had forgotten. Much like you and I have been told that He'll never leave us nor forsake us, and we forget. Much like He's told us that I will meet all your needs, but we forget. Much like he tells us that in Philippians 1 6 that he'll finish the work that he began. But we forget. And so we don't want to knock these guys too much. I used to knock them like when earlier, you know, when I was super young in the Lord. I can't believe it. And then you go through your little trials and your tribulations. And then you're laying on the floor getting picked up because of your sin. And then you're like, okay, no, I understand now how easily. 
we can like be led astray. You know how easily I can just look away even though I know all the truths. Amen? And this is exactly where these guys were at. And so notice chapter 20, verse 1. Listen to what it says. Now the first day of the week, now the first day of the week, which is what day? Sunday. Sunday. Thank you, sir. Sunday is always the first day of the week. It was back then. It is today. So now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene, if you have a King James Version, which I presume none of you do, um, you're going to hear Mary of Magdala, which is, that's where she was from. So if that was you here today, you would be called Tony of Hialeah. <laughs> Some of you would be called uh, Pedro of Puerto Rico, right? Uh, Tony of Homestead. Willie of Westchester, right? That's what you would be called. <laughs> That's what you would be called, right? And this, this is what they called her. So this wasn't her last name, by the way. Okay, everybody clear on that? Right? So, so now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Verse 2, Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter, verse 3, went, therefore went out, and the other disciple, and were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the tomb first. And he, verse 5, Stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying there. Yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen clothes lying there. Verse 7, And the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but folded together in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first in also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. Your attention, please. And so we see this uh, huge event, if you will, in the lives of these men. Um, and, and I think that's important to point out because as we continue to do life, um, notice that there, are, that there will be huge events in our lives. Amen? And again, we can just gloss over them, but th there will be huge events in our lives that are just tipping points, if you will. And, and, I, and I throw that at you so that um, you would be, listen, you would be um, vigilant. That, that means that you would be watchful because there are tipping points in our lives and nothing to do with salvation, by the way, because we are saved. Amen? And nothing can take that away from us. Do you, not, do you know that? Tell me, give me a good hearty amen on that. Amen. You know that, that there's nothing that you can do if you are already saved that can ever hinder that. You're, you're safe and secure forever and ever and ever. And what a joy that is, right? Because that would stink if it was dependent on us. I think I would have probably lost my salvation, I don't know, maybe like 17 times already. Um, seriously, I would have had to regain it. Um, but that's it. It's once and for all secure. But there are tipping points in our lives that can really set us and move us forward or allow us to take steps back. And that's important. And so it's important that we would be, in fact, vigilant on how we are taking, on how we are conducting our business when it comes to our minds and our hearts and our speech um, and the things that we choose to partake of and to allow. I think that's important for us to understand that, that there's a greater picture involved than just this little moment. And that, listen, Legacy is important. You remember that? And seriousness in the man or the woman of God is important. Legacy is real. What we're leaving behind is real, even when, when we're not gone yet. 
because we tend to think that, oh, the legacy that I'm leaving is when I'm gone. No, 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 it's starting right here and right now. My, actually, it actually started a long time ago. That which you're leaving behind. What type of fragrance are we letting out? Is it a sweet-smelling aroma to God, or is it that stench? And I know we've, we can say yes to both of those, right? At all times we've done that. And so my exhortation is, listen, and it's to myself too, there are these just pivotal moments that sometimes don't seem big, but they're huge. And I'm going to let the Holy Spirit let you know when those times are, but I must inform you that those times are and that they exist. And it's important that you would stay focused on that. And I'll give you an example, and this is just a very small example. Um, you know, what, what's, what's transpiring here today, it, it won't happen again. See, like, right now, this gathering, it won't happen again. I might see you on Wednesday again, and I might see you on, Wednesday, on Sunday again, but to this, this, this right here, the, that opportunity that we got to worship, and, and it, you know, some of those songs, they, they really, like, minister to me. That's not going to repeat itself. Like, I could play that, those songs right now going home, but the moment was right here and right now. And sometimes I cringe when I don't see some of you here. But don't get caught up with the trip that, oh, you know, I'm not at church. That's your business. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying to you is that there are pivotal moments and that once this is gone, it's gone. It's gone. Last, uh, I think it was last Tuesday. Yes, it was last Tuesday. We had a men's meeting. And, um, man, it was such a beautiful time in the Word and in the Lord. And um, I know that the meeting was for me. The meeting was for all the guys that were on there, you know. But I used some of that that was shared, and, and I sent it to some of the ladies. Actually, I th think I sent it to all you. I don't know if I did or not. But one of the ladies responded, that was for me. <laughs> and I'm thinking, man, could you imagine if I would have decided to miss that Tuesday? I wouldn't have gotten that. Um, I wouldn't have been able to pass that along. And then so I would have cheated myself. Um, that sister would have not... She, and, and, you know, God is not dependent on me, for goodness sakes, but he, he has chosen for you and I to be His hands and His feet. Amen? And His mouth. Say amen if you're with me. Right? Because He doesn't need you because if you shut up, oh, you know, even the stones would cry out. Period. Even the stones would cry out. So He doesn't need you you have gotten the privilege to be part of kingdom business. And so when I sent that, when I sent that out to, to, and I got that back, I was like, man, Lord, this is why I don't want to like slack, Lord, you know, because the picture is so much bigger than what we think. And so I cringe sometimes when I don't see people here for a season. And I cringe sometimes, can I be this honest? Here's where you're going to get challenged. When I don't receive a text from you for a while, and I'm like, eh, do I really need to be reminding you to be in the Word? And by the way, some of you, I know what your response is going to be. Well, I am in the Word, but I'm not texting, right? That's fine. That's fine. But there are pivotal moments that you don't want to lose, that you don't want to give up. And I say to you that this is a pivotal moment in the, in the lives of these individuals. And so look, you got your Bibles there, so listen, listen to what it says. Now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw the stone had been taken away from the tomb. This was a huge stone that would be on this track, right? That you would roll it onto the track and then you couldn't roll it away. Say amen if you're with me. Okay, do, do, this was a huge stone and it would take many, many, many grown men and I would suppose grown women. We don't want to leave the ladies out. <laughs> Thank you very much. I should look at that because Harry comes up with some good stuff. 
By the way, I told him to put that. There's the stone. There's the stone. And so you see the stone would be rolled and then it would fall into this like track. And so it wasn't easy to get it up. You would have to, it would be like an uphill climb to get it out. And it wouldn't take just like a guy. Like you and I, pick three guys and we would still struggle. Because that's how big and heavy, and they did that on purpose. So that nobody would come and steal the bodies. Be it Jesus' body, be it anybody. Say amen if you're with me. So she gets to the tomb and the stone has been rolled away. By the way, the other Gospels tells us, tells, tell us that there were soldiers guarding the tomb. That Pilate had actually, had actually commissioned a couple of Roman soldiers and said, go guard the tomb lest they come and steal the body. Actually, her, um, one of the, the Jewish leaders had come up with that. So that they don't say that he had risen again. The other Gospels tell us that the soldiers were asleep. <laughs> Dead asleep, right? I think God put them into a stupor. And they were dead asleep, and the angels came and rolled the stone away. Because two angels are going to be standing right there. Got your Bibles there? Look at verse 2. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved. That's John, who's writing this. And said to them, they have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Verse 3, and then Peter, therefore, he hears this, so he went out, and the other disciple, and were going to the tomb. So, verse 4, they both ran together. Where are they running, by the way? To the tomb. Who's running? John and Peter, right? It says the disciple whom Jesus loved, but that's John. That's how he described himself, right? The disciple whom Jesus loved. I love that. That's really cool, actually. And um, so they're both running to the tomb. Who told them to go run? Who told them? Mary Magdalene, right? Hey, I've gone to the tomb. The stone is rolled away. He's not in there. So they're like, what? And they start running to the tomb. Notice, verse 5. I'm sorry, verse 4, the end of it. I'm sorry, no, verse 4. So they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter <laughs> and came to the tomb first. Why he has to put that, I don't know. Maybe it tells us his humanity, right? Because we tend to think, John. At least I do, right? Like I look at all the other men and I'm like, these guys are the bomb. But then I look at John and I look at and I think this guy just floated, you know, with a little halo around him, right? That like he wrote John, he wrote Revelation, First John, Second John, brethren, love one another. And you're like, this dude's the man, right? But look, guess what? He writes, I outran him. <laughs> John, what's the purpose of that, dude? Right, you're right, bro. He was the son of thunder, the son of Zebedee. Anyway, um, so look, man, at the end of the day, just a sinner saved by grace, right? Just a sinner saved by grace. Notice, so he outruns him in verse 5, and he, meaning himself, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying there, yet he did not go in. Verse 6, then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. Your attention, please. Listen to this, because this is, I love this. And it just shows God and how cool he is and how he has, we're all so different. You know, he just loves us so much. And in his kingdom, there are, there's so many different personalities. Did you see that? John outruns Peter, and he makes sure he tells us that. I beat him, by the way, just so you know. He outruns Peter. He gets to the tomb. He looks in, and he sees everything, but he doesn't go in. Peter, lagging behind because he got beat in the race, gets to the tomb and goes right in. Boom. Goes right in. Did you see that? Look at the different personalities, right? John's one of those guys, kind of sits back. Peter's one of those guys, man, get out of my way, man. And by the way, I tripped back there. That's why you beat me, right? <laughs> Just a joke. I don't know. But he goes right in, you know? And, man, I just love that. I just see that the Lord, man, he just, he, He's made us different, and yet we're still the same. Um, and we all have our gifts, and we all have our and, um, and we all have our weaknesses, right? Your weakness might not be my weakness, and my weakness might not be your weakness, but yet we still share some weaknesses, amen? And then on the same, on the other flip side, we, we, we have the, the strengths, and on that same, I, have, I might have some strengths that you don't have yet, 
right? Because he's strengthening your strength and he's strengthening your weaknesses. Amen? And then you might have some strengths that I don't have yet. Um, an angel has arrived. Do you see him? <laughs> no? You don't see him? Okay. And so um, I had that plan, by the way. And so, so you see these different personalities and, man, God loves us each and, each and all the same. Amen? And so John beats Peter. He makes sure he tells us, but he gets to the tomb. He looks, but he doesn't go in. Peter just walks right in. Get out of the way, dude. What's going on? Where's my Lord? Right? So notice. Verse 6, Then Simon Peter came and following him, and he went into the tomb, and he saw the linen clothes lying there. Verse 7, And the handkerchief that had been around his head not lying with the linen clothes, but folded together in a place by itself. So did you notice everything is kind of neat, right? So this wasn't, uh, if you had grave robbers, they wouldn't have un taken his clothes off or, or the, the linens off. They would have just taken the whole body. Say amen of you with me, right? And they certainly wouldn't have folded it up neatly and left it there, <laughs> right? I mean, come on, that just doesn't happen. But they come in, or Peter comes in, John is over there, he's, he's by the doorway looking, um, and everything is laid out nice and neat. That's amazing to me. So we see what he was in, wrapped with, but his body is not there. Let's continue. Look at verse 8. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first, who's that? John went in also. Finally, Peter went in first, then he went in. And he saw, and what? He believed. I suggest to you that John had a revelation here. Obviously, we're told that he believed that the other guys had not had quite yet. Right? Maybe Peter believed, but John doesn't tell us. But he's, John, first person says, well, third person says, look, man, I walked in, I saw, and I remembered what he had said. And you know what? I believed. I didn't get, I, I'm, I'm still confused, I'm still a little worried. Uh, yes, uh, for, you know, every once in a while I don't believe, but you know what, I'm looking and I believe. Amen? Does that remind you of somebody? Yeah, that's you. <laughs> and that's me, right? So notice. Verse, verse 9, I'm sorry, for as yet they did not know the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the, dis then the disciples went away again to their own homes. Verse 11, But Mary stood outside by the tomb, weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. Man, get the picture. I wonder how that must have looked like. Uh, I imagine it. I don't know what your Mary looks like. I know what my, my Mary looks like, right? Because I'm imagining her right now in my mind. And you know what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about the one that I saw in Holy Land. That's the one that always hits me. Is that you too? No? Okay, well, that's me. You know, with the, with the you know, clothed, right? And I had, a, I had something the other day. My wife and I were talking about how sad that that, that, doesn't, that doesn't exist anymore, huh? That Holy Land. I mean, we, I digress a little bit, but, man, that was a beautiful time. And when we got to share it, wasn't that beautiful? That was so awesome. And so here's Mary looking inside into the tomb. Right, kind of stooping in, looking, maybe, I don't know, hoping that she maybe sees him. Maybe she, she made a mistake, right? Verse 12, and she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Your attention, please. I want to make sure that I point out to you that as Mary looks in, there was a, there's a slab. Listen, I've been to the place where they think that it is. I don't know if it's really the place, right? But it's certainly a replica of it. Actually, and even at the uh, Holy Land, there's a replica of it. And, you know, there's a tablet. You look in and there's like a, like a, a bed and it's made of stone. Same many of you with me, right? And so I want you to get the picture because Mary stoops in, looks in, and she sees two angels, one at the head of the tablet, of the, of the, of the bed of stone, and one at the feet. Are you getting this? For those of you that know your Bibles, 
you remember, and I, we even talked about it on Wednesday night, this is um, a picture of the mercy seat that God has in the Holy of Holies, where He has the mercy seat and He has the two seraphim, one on each end. Say amen if you're with me. Amen? amen? And so she walks in and we see a picture right away of that which we see in the Holy of Holies. And I would even take it a step further and remind you that in the Old Testament, in the picture, when the um, high priest would enter into the Holy of Holies, he would sprinkle blood on the mercy seat. And under the mercy seat, inside the uh, Ark of the Covenant, you remember, was um, the manna. It was Aaron's, Aaron's um, rod that budded. And you had the Ten uh, Commandments, the two tablets, the law, if you will. Uh, the three very specific times that, that the, the children of Israel sinned in rebellion against God. God, in all the times, He puts it under those three um, categories, if you will. What are they? They broke the law. They were disobedient with God's leadership. And that's when Aaron's um, rod budded. And they were disobedient when it came to God's provision. The what? The manna. Not only when He gave them manna, literally, physically to eat, but when the manna from heaven came down, they rejected it. Who's the manna from heaven? Jesus. Okay. It's possible that you're a little confused right now. Some of you that have been here for a while, you're catching it right away because we've talked about it a hundred times. Those of you that might be a little bit new, you might be saying, what are you talking about? I'm catching it, but I'm still not catching it. But the three times where God says, I'm, I'm labeling everything under these three. You've rejected my provision. You've broken my law. And you've rejected my form of leadership. Say amen if you're with me. Everything else falls under that. Are you, are you following that? Because if not, you would see more things there. But he puts the mercy seat over all of those. He puts everything under the what? The mercy seat. He says, look, everything that you do or don't do, because sins of commission and sins of omission, they fall under these, things, these categories here. But the mercy seat is over it. And when the blood is placed on the mercy seat... I forgive. Amen? So, here is the Lamb of God on top of the mercy seat. Amen? Amen. Here is sin. Notice it wasn't when the other two were there. But when Mary looks in, there you have I don't know about you, but this is a tremendous revelation here that God presents to us that, yeah, the Ark of the Covenant, that was the real deal, but that was just a type. And that mercy seed, that was the real deal, but that was just a type of what was going to come, which we're looking at it right here and right now in John 20, verse uh, 9. And so Mary looks in and sees these two angels. Notice, verse 12, I'm sorry, verse, verse 13, verse 12, and she saw two angels in white sitting one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Notice there's two angels talking to her. She's so distraught that she's not, not even focused, right? Most people, they fall on their face when the angel shows up. This, she, she's so distraught that literally two angels are talking to her hovering over the place where they had laid Jesus, and she's like, uh, this doesn't interest me at all. Where's my Lord? Did you see that? This is how distraught she is. Notice verse 14. Now when she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Again, super distraught, right? Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, 
I'm tired of all you guys. The angels, these two angels, you. Where's my Lord? Look, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Again, she's just not catching it at this particular moment. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And she, sir, she turned and said to him, Rabboni, which is to say, teacher. Your attention, please. So the minute that he called her name, she knew, right? She had heard her name called before by him. And so she was like, that's it, it's him. Amen? What a beautiful thing that is. Um, as I read this this morning, I asked the Lord, Lord, please allow me to hear me when, when you talk to me, Lord. You know, I miss that sometimes. I, I miss hearing his voice. Uh, like I literally miss it because I'm not hearing it or, or I literally miss it because I will miss it. You know, sort of like you miss an exit, like it's there, but you miss it. Are you following me? The two misses, right? And I remind you that the famine is never God speaking. The famine is you listening. The, the, the not hearing is not that God's not talking, it's that you're not listening or you're missing it, which I presume is, or is the same thing, it, really, when you put them together. And so I said, Lord, you know, I don't want to miss your voice, Daddy. I don't want to miss those subtle times that you, that you lead me, you know. And, and he's so gentle. Sometimes he's too gentle, and I say that with respect. But I, I wish, like, he would, like, speak louder sometimes. You know, but... It's just not the way he rolls, man. It's a quiet and gentle spirit. Um, in, the soft, um, in, in the soft voice is how he speaks to us. You know? Say amen if you're with me. Um, which prompts my thought of, man, maybe I should speak in a softer voice at times. Because I tend to be very rough. Um, I only respond to roughness sometimes. Actually, I don't. I respond to, you know, since I am rough, I respond to, to, to nice better, you know. But I, I, I hear how he deals with us, and I want to be more like him. Amen? And I don't want to miss his voice. And I'm going to pray for you right now, because I did pray for myself this morning. Lord, um, I don't want to miss your voice. I, I want to be like this woman, Lord, that when she hears you speak immediately, I know it's him. I know it's him. And so let me pray for you right now. Amen? Lord, thank you again for this beautiful day. Thank you for the opportunity to pray, Lord. And I pray for these, your people, Lord. And I throw myself in there again, Lord, double time for me. Um, Father, we want to be like this Mary, that when you call our names, we are attentive uh, we understand that it's you calling us. We understand your direction, Lord. And that we would be quick and prompt to respond, O oh Lord. Again, Daddy, you desire nothing more than intimacy with us. Nothing more than that we would be your sons and daughters, Lord. Everything else is cake, uh, icing on the cake, if you will, Lord. But your desire is that we would just be your sons and daughters, Lord. And what better son can there be and what better daughter can there be that when dad calls, we, we respond, Lord. So let that be the case with us even now, Father. Awaken us to your still small voice, Lord, even now. In Jesus' name we pray. If you agree, say amen. 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 So let that be the case. So he calls her. She responds immediately. Notice verse 17. And Jesus said to her, do not cling to me. For I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. Your attention, please, quickly. Understand that Jesus wasn't shooing her away because you can't touch me and I'm going to be defiled. No, he's simply telling her, listen, let go, woman. I got to go. <laughs> I have to go. Are you understanding? Listen, don't, don't cling to me because I have to go. I have to get out of here. I have to go. I got, I got still business to do because she's like, Whew. you get it? It wasn't like, don't touch me, don't touch me, don't touch me because I'm going to be defiled. That's not God. God's like, touch me all you want. Come and hug me. And do you think for one second, if we take a step back and say, and by the way, I need to tell you this because I've heard it taught the other way and I submit to you that it's completely off, 
Do you think for one second that God, the Lord God Almighty, is somehow have, has to be tiptoeing because you and I can possibly defile Him? Think about that for a second. How could you and I possibly defile Him? He's the pinnacle of holiness. Holiness is Him. So, it doesn't, you could have touched Him. All of us could have touched Him. He wasn't going to be defiled. Perfection had already happened. Say amen if you're with me. That's it. Remember, it is finished. By the way, when He was, on, when he's, when he was here, walking uh, as a man, because now there was a spirit, there was a difference about him, right? He still had the body, by the way. He still had his, his body. How do we know? Because the Bible tells us that we're going to see him and he's still going to have the, the scars. So the body that he walked with here, he's still going to have there. Say amen if you're with me. Amen. You and I will have a different body. Well, you and I will, will, will walk into our fulfillment uh, it, with our glorious body, right? Which is that which has seen, not, not seen sin nor sinned. Amen? So remember that this came from the earth, so it has to go back from, to the earth. He did not come from the earth. Amen? He, he was of the seed of the Holy Spirit. Man did not beget Jesus. You have been begotten by man. I have been begotten by man before being born again. The Lord, no. He was born of the seed of the Holy Spirit. You and I are born of the seed of man. Say amen if you're with me. That's why you and I could never die for the sins of anybody. That's why this body, from dust it came and to dust it will return, but not him. Say amen if you're with me. And so there he stands, and obviously Mary is like, Ah, my Lord! She's like, Mary, take a step back. <laughs> let, let go of me, woman. <laughs> I got to go. Right? So listen to what he says. But go to my brethren, Mary. There's still work to do. Don't cling on to me. You're going to have plenty of time for that. Go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father. My father, by nature. Uh, your father, uh, by grace. Getting it, right? You're getting it? He says, Mary, go, don't, stop Mary, don't cling to me, go to my brethren, go, go and tell them that I'm ascending, you've seen me, I'm ascending to my father and to your father. Same father, right? But one, Jesus, the father is his father by nature, right? And to everybody else, he's our father by grace. Are you getting that? Right? Good. Get that. Receive, receive that because you and I are uh, branches that are grafted in. He's my Father by grace, through faith. He's Jesus' Father because <laughs> that's His Pappy, like for real, by nature. Amen? You're getting that. I pray. Yes. So go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father. And I am ascending to my God by nature and your God by what? Grace. By grace. Beautiful. Thank you. So he gives her the instructions. Verse 18, Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. What must they have thought of her? She's drunk. She's crazy. She's taking Percocet. I don't know what, the, yes, that's, no, that's pain. Uh, whatever it is. She's nuts. What must they have thought, right? Verse, verse 19. Hold that thought, my friend. I couldn't hear you. Verse 19. Then, the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, because, of course, the Jews were um, running rampant now. Hey, if you have believed that we killed him, now if you're a believer in him, we're going to take care of you. Amen? So they were hiding. When the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst, in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Verse 20. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side, which were obviously, obviously still what? pierced and forever they will be by the way 
Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. <laughs> Understatement. Verse 21. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Your attention please. He's looking at them. He's telling them, hey, the work continues. I proclaim that it's over, but the work continues. The work what? The, Lord, the Father sent me. Now I am sending you to proclaim the gospel. Notice. And when he had said this, verse 22, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Uh, the Holy Spirit can come in them now because technically, listen, and I use the word technically as if heaven would use that word, um, but for communication's sake, their sins had been forgiven. Amen? And they had already believed. Amen? Because remember what he proclaimed on the cross, Tetelestai? It is finished. So the, it's over. Now, the Holy Spirit will come, across, will come upon all believers in Acts chapter 2, and the church will be born. The, the church age will be born. But here, um, the 70 disciples that are together, or, yeah, I'm not sure the number, but another portion of Scripture tells us, they receive the Holy Spirit. Amen? Because now they're able to. Because their sins have been, what? Done away with. So their spirits, if you will, have been, ready, born again. Amen? And this is why we must be born again. Because we, we're born after the order of man. And in, in with the seed of man, therefore, we are alive physically, but dead spiritually. So being born again, which the Bible says you must be born again to see the kingdom of heaven, um, it's that the Spirit of God comes to reside within us. And henceforth now I am in fact born and alive to His Spirit. Say amen if you're with me. So notice, verse 24, Now Thomas, called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. And the other disciples, verse 25, John chapter 20, therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. And so he said to them, unless I see his hands and the print of the nails, I put my finger and, and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Your attention, please. <laughs> so we usually call this guy Doubting Thomas, but I submit to you that he's unbelieving Thomas. And you know, forever, you know, I've heard like in the past when I used to sit through teachings and, you know, they, they kind of put this guy down, but like I see, you know, like this guy is like, he has it, you know, he, there's weight to him. Again, I've heard it in the past where we tend to put this guy down. I can't believe this guy, you know, but I think that he's like dead on. <laughs> Would you not agree? Think about that for a second. No, no, no. Show me. Listen, man, don't give me any more stories. I put all my trust in this guy. He, I, I see him get crucified. You know, they all left, but they're all at a distance watching. Uh, you know, no, no, I'm not believing unless I see him. Forget that. I'm done with the stories. Say amen if you're with me. I could see that in a second. He's hurt, man. Right? He's hurt. He's disappointed. He's confused. Um... This is not an easy guy to convince. He's like, you know what? Nah. I'm not giving myself over like this anymore. I've been burned already. You ever heard that? I've been burned so many times. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, man. <laughs> Being burned is part of the, the call. <laughs> I mean, it just is. We've all been burned. Amen? We've all been massacred. And all been burned, and we all people take shots at us all the time uh, through social media, through uh, you know Facebook. You know that we've all been burned. Um, and so you know what, this guy is just being him. He's being as, as honest as he can be. You know what? I'm not going for any of that. You got to show me. Notice. I'm not going to believe, verse 26, and after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. So notice, eight days have passed, but he's still hanging out with the disciples. 
I like that, right? Jesus came, and again, the door is being shut, so the Lord just like walks in and stood in the midst and said, What? Peace to you. Verse 27, Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger in here, <laughs> and look at my hands, and reach your hand in here, and put it in my side, into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Your attention, please. Notice Jesus wasn't there when Thomas said this, but he knew exactly. Right? Because what did Thomas say? Unless I see him, and I see the prince, and I stick my finger in his side, I'm not going to believe. Jesus wasn't even there. But Jesus shows up and says, come here, buddy. I want you to do it now. But again, not with a condescending heart, just with a heart of love. Because notice what, at the end of the, game, at the, end of the day, what, is, what does Jesus want? He looks at him and says, I don't want you to unbelieve. But I want you to believe, Thomas. And I love you so much that if this is what it takes, here I am, Thomas. So believe. I love that. Amen? That's so beautiful. <laughs> Notice verse 28. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. This Thomas was, was the real deal, guys. Verse 29. Jesus said to him, Thomas... Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those. By the way, look around. Because this is who he's talking about. By the way, none of you looked around, but it, you know what I mean, right? Good. I said looked around and all of you looked at me. But <laughs> blessed are those. Thank you, Darius. Blessed, yeah, because you did look around. Blessed are those, which is you. Okay, which is you and which is me. And everybody who's come before us, after the Lord and everyone who's going to come after us. So this is us. So notice, Thomas, you, you believe because you have seen me. You have believed. But bless, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. That's you. Amen? Amen. You're blessed. I love that. Because I haven't seen him, have you? No. And now don't tell me I see his... Yeah, I know we've seen his wonderful works. But I haven't seen him... I want to see him. I want to see him. I, I want to see what he looks like. I want to hug him like Mary did. I want to talk to him. I want to ask him questions. Not, you know, why did my puppy die? Okay, you can ask him that, but that's not what I want to ask him. I just have like a bunch of questions for him, right? Like, why did you say this guy, Lord? No, just kidding. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, but, you know, I just want to talk to him, man. I want to see what he looks like. I want to see what, the, what, you know, what all that looks like. You know, I want to see that, that, um, that piercing on his side. You know, I just want to see him. Um, so I haven't seen him, and you haven't. And God says, man, blessed are you because you believe. Notice, let's close up shop in verse 30. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples. So a lot, a lot he's not telling us, which are not written in this book. Verse 31. But these, the ones that I'm showing you, God, uh, John would say, these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. Amen indeed. Was that a knockout or was that a knockout? That was awesome. And so we close in prayer in about 30 seconds. I want to remind you, for you that's here, or for maybe anybody listening, if you haven't settled the issue of who your Savior is, I remind you that if that hasn't happened, you have a destiny, um, you have a date set, up, set apart for you in hell, where the Bible is very clear that there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth where there will be no um, second chance at that point. The chances that you are being given and that I have been given are here and are now. For when your body, um, when your spirit departs from your body, your physical body, that's called death. That's when what we, what we know as death. You are either going to be in the presence of the Lord or you will be in a uh, place awaiting final judgment. And in that place, again, the Bible is very clear that there will be weeping because of the regret of, man, I heard, but I didn't turn. 
there will be gnashing of teeth. That there's going to be a grinding of teeth and that's indicative of the absolute horror of the place that you find yourself in. Because everybody who has ever walked the face of the earth and everybody who will walk the face of the earth until that day has a destiny set for them. You have a date. You have a place where you're going to reside and you're going to spend the rest of your life. It's either going to be in heaven or it's going to be in hell. You're either going to be in His presence or you are going to be eternally away from His presence. In darkness, where the fire is not quenched, if you will. Where the fire does not die and the thirst is not quenched. A pace of eternal suffering. What that looks like, I have no idea. But I don't need to know. Because I have the other option. And I don't need to find out. I have the other option which is to be in His presence forever and ever. And it's as simple as that. But the Bible says that you must be born again. For you were born of the seed of man in iniquity. You were born in sin, you were born a sinner, and henceforth you sinned. And therefore you and I and everybody else were guilty. We're guilty. And God doesn't play, I throw things under the rug. God doesn't play, I don't see. God doesn't play, ready, dumb. Justice is God, and therefore justice needs to be served. So there's no way around it. There's no loophole. There's no, there's no way around it. You're either forgiven or you're guilty. Period. If you're forgiven, you're allowed to be called a believer. By Him, by the way. You're allowed to be called His Son. If you're not forgiven, the Bible calls you a goat. You're illegitimate. You are, listen, wood for the fire. You are wood for the fire. You will stoke you, you yourself, will, will stoke the fires of hell. It's as simple as that. There's no, you know, feel-good message and God is love. and No, 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 no. Love is God, and this is why there has to be justice. And so if you haven't settled the issue today, I urge you to settle the issue. And God is very clear on that, that today is the day of your salvation. It's not tomorrow, and it's not when I'm on my deathbed, for you not, do not know when you're going to be on your deathbed. And the Bible is very clear that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, then you will be saved. But you have to believe. And you have to understand what you're dealing with, which is hell or heaven, which is forgiven or guilty. For you see, you are guilty, but He took your penalty. For He who knew no sin became sin for you and for me, that you and I would become, listen, the righteousness of God in Him. So my guilt is given to Him, His righteousness is given to me. And therefore I am guilty no longer. So in a way that you and I will never see and never understand on this side of eternity, a transfer happened on that cross where your sin and my sin and the child molester and the rapist and the thief and the one who, who, who can't stop saying F this and F that and, and the adulterer and the murderer and the fill in the blank, you and me, well, that came upon him. And he transferred his righteousness unto me. And so if the truth be told, I'm still guilty. I'm just forgiven. He became my mediator. And on that day, the Bible says that He will be our lawyer. For you see, that's another thing that's very black and white. You're either going to have Him as a lawyer or you're going to have yourself as a lawyer in that day when you stand before God. And can I tell you something? You know the old saying, the man who chooses himself as a lawyer is a fool. For you will stand before the court of heaven 
and he's either going to pronounce you not guilty because he's your lawyer, or you're going to be pronounced guilty because you're going to play lawyer. And God is not impressed with how many old ladies you walked across the street. God is not impressed with the thousands. Well, nobody gets thousands. Certainly unbelievable. Well, maybe they do. God is not impressed with your good works. The Bible says they're filthy rags to him. Period. Not impressed with that nonsense. The only thing that he allows is that Lamb of God that he allowed into the world to redeem mankind. For God indeed so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. So I pray that that's you here today. I know that it is me here today. And I can only work out my own salvation with fear and trembling. I can't do anything for you but to tell you. So my suggestion to you is settle the issue if today you got the little game going on. My suggestion to you is that if you know somebody that's close to you and they got the little game going on, that you would let them know. Because time is short. And you shall know them by their fruits, the Bible says. So they can say that they're believers all they want, but what, how are your fruits? Number one, are you here? Number two, are you, are, are, you, are you functioning in the realm of the kingdom of God here on this earth? On earth as it is in heaven? It's really that simple. So settle the issue if you haven't already. And all those little loved ones that you have around you, if you know that they haven't settled the issue... Speak to them, man. Let them know. Hey, you're going to hell. And it's not a game and it's not a joke. And whether they take heed or not, listen, you'll be able to look at the Lord and say, I told them. The watchman on the tower, Ezekiel 33, lest their blood be on you. If any one of you here today has been away from the Lord, today's the day. Repent. Repent so that times of refreshing would come. Get back to Him. Ask Him for forgiveness. He's ready to give you. The lamentation tells us that His mercies are new, listen, every day. He's not holding any grudges. He's not going to be pointing any fingers. Repent, so that times of refreshing would come. Because the trumpet is about to sound. And at any moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the Bible tells us, we are going to be in His presence. Period. And there's going to be no more time to, I wish I would have, and Diana, it's over with. What you did, you did, and what you didn't, you didn't. And you're going to receive your rewards done in the body, the Bible says. The body here and the body of Christ. It's a double body, if you will. You're going to receive your reward accordingly. So stop holding on to your money as if it was God. Stop holding on to your fill-in-the-blank as if they... Because your call is to give it to Him, to give Him your first and your best. Money, time, uh, thinking, uh, verbal, it all. All of it. Let it be known that I told you. And if somehow, some way, you see me forgetting you better come and tell me because I'm not above anybody or anything. I will drift away in a second. In a second. Matter of fact, the last two weeks I've been meaning to make a check um, and I'm bringing up money, but forget, it, it, money's like, the, <laughs> that's the low end of the, of, the, of the ladder. And can you believe that I have forgotten two weeks in a row? And I was super embarrassed this morning with the Lord. I'm like, really, man? I didn't forget to pay the credit card. I didn't forget to dish out the credit card for the subs we ate yesterday. But I forget to bring you, Lord. That's embarrassing. I'm called to give you my first and my best, Lord. And so, hey, today's the day. Let's get on track, man, because time is short. Amen? Amen? Father, thank you for this beautiful day.
Lord, our eyes are on you. Bottom line, thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace towards us. Thank you for the strong uh, group of believers, Lord, that you have brought to do life together. I thank you for them, Lord. I wouldn't be the man that I am uh, without, um, Lord, these that you have chosen to, to, to do life with, Lord. And again, he, even the rocks would cry out, Lord. I know you could have chosen anybody, and if, and if we're not doing our job, you'll remove and put in, Lord, and we know that. But thank you, Lord, that, that we're all moving forward, Father, that we're all on the same page. So keep us focused, Lord, on you, and remind us, Lord, that at the end of the day, Lord, my first and only call is to be your son, for the ladies to be your daughter, Lord. And as we focus in on that, everything else shall come unto us. Everything else shall flow in the proper manner, Lord. So be glorified, be honored, Lord. We're just grateful for you and the work that you have done in us, Lord. Continue, Father. We thank you for the continued work. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, amen. and amen. May I have two more minutes of your time?